Raw milk is my all-time favorite food that we produce here on our homestead. We milk our Guernsey cow Maddie once a day, and at her peak, she gives us as much as 35 gallons a week. Right now, we're only getting 14, but still, what do we do with all of that milk? What could you do with all that milk? I just got back from a six mile run and I know that when I am running or working out that I need to fuel my body. And I think that milk, raw milk, is one of the best ways to do that. I have come up with my own post-workout chocolate milk that I really, really love. I'm gonna show you how to make it. Start off with a pint of raw milk and then I'm gonna stick some raw eggs in there also really high in protein. If it's your first time hearing something like this, it might sound a little bit disgusting, but if you put enough of the cocoa milk syrup in there, you don't taste the eggs. Next up is a heaping tablespoon of cocoa powder. We get this Shiloh Farms cocoa powder online and it is some really good stuff. And I also put a little bit of beef gelatin in there. Beef gelatin is really high in protein. I also put this collagen in here, something that me and Michelle really like. It's very high in protein, got a lot of amino acids in there and it supports joint health and I've got a bad knee and so since I've been running a lot I'm trying to do all I can to take care of my knee because I don't want to end up with injuries I want to be able to keep running so I put two scoops of this in there as well I'm going to use this stick blender here in the quart jar this stick blender is awesome it is the best way to make chocolate milk oh, I forgot the maple syrup Maple syrup also has a lot of minerals in it, and if you're going to use a sweetener, that's one of the best ones you can use. And we're going to be making a bunch of other dairy stuff today, and just as a little disclaimer, so like I said, I do drink this every morning, but a lot of the other stuff that we're going to do today, it's not like we consume this much dairy every single day, but I want to show you as much as I can in one video. Do you get chocolate milk now because you were a good girl while we videoed? Yeah. The other thing about our milk consumption is that we don't ever actually use 35 gallons a week for ourselves. We could use about 14 gallons if we wanted to, but we don't even use quite that much. We do herd shares, so some family and friends of ours will buy part of our cow and then they are legally able to get raw milk from us. So that's where some of it goes to. I just came in from watering trees outside. It's super hot out there and I just don't really feel like eating something really hearty for lunch. And so I'm going to make myself a yogurt parfait. Um, I do this for the kids all the time for snacks. Every Monday I make a gallon of yogurt. That's one good way to use skim milk that I have skimmed cream off for butter making. I just put some plain yogurt into a mason jar and then I layer on a little bit of vanilla and maple syrup. Strawberries are in season right now, so I'm going to put lots of strawberries on there. I'm gonna put another scoop of yogurt on top of that. Some more strawberries and some maple syrup. A couple quick tips for yogurt. I have in the past made yogurt that my family didn't like, unfortunately. Um, one thing I do is instead of just um, heating my milk in a pot and putting the culture in and setting it on the back of the stove to ferment, I actually pour my hot milk into quart jars, four quart jars, put the lid on them, and then I fill a cooler with as hot water as the tap will give me, put the lid on that, and I let it sit in there for eight to nine hours. And something about the steady heat all around the quart jars makes the perfect yogurt consistency. I also add some gelatin to my yogurt to make so that it's easier for children to eat, a lot less messy. Gelatin makes so that it can stand up like this more. Use Greek yogurt as your culture instead of just like normal yogurt. Something about the, the Greek culture makes it thicker. Another thing that I think is really important is to let your yogurt chill in the fridge overnight before you stir it or do anything with it. That for me makes a huge difference in the smoothness of it. One of my favorite treats is an iced coffee. And the thing is, if you go to Starbucks or someplace like that, it's not healthy coffee and it's got tons of sugar in it. Me and Izzy were just outside working on our little mountain bike trail through our little woods, just for something cool to do here at home. And it is so hot out there. And this is the perfect kind of treat to come into in the afternoon. I don't do it every day, but some days, gotta 
keep from drinking too much milk. I mean, this video is all about milk, all about dairy and how good it is and stuff. And it is really good. I believe it's good for you, but it's gotta be done in balance. For me, after we got our cow, within the next like six months to a year, I gained like 30 pounds, which is nuts. I was actually really skinny at that point because we had just built our house. We'd gone through a lot of stress. I was drinking close to a gallon a day for a while. And then more recently, it's been more like half a gallon a day or so, but I'm cutting that down. It's usually about a quarter a day. And I'm also doing other dieting and exercising and stuff. And I just lost, what, 26 pounds now. So anyways, just drink milk, but do it in moderation. Don't drink too much because it will add on the weight. Dairy is a bit of a controversial topic in the health world. I admit for myself, it's been a bit of a journey, like my idea about milk and how I actually feel about it. In this video, we make it look as though we eat tons of dairy all the time. But the truth is, is that I have not in the past tolerated dairy very well. And in this past year, I've done a lot of work on healing my gut. And so this is the first time in a long time that I can actually eat a substantial amount of dairy and not get sick. In the past few years, while I've been working on healing my gut, I talked to my nutritionist about dairy because I knew I couldn't tolerate it very well. He said that a lot of the studies that have been done on dairy, talking about all the negative side effects, have been done on conventional Holstein milk, not raw Jersey Guernsey A2A2 grass-fed milk. So that was really comforting for me. I just used milk in small amounts and now I can drink a glass of milk and not get sick. I don't actually do that very often. I mostly just drink some cream in my coffee. I use as much butter as I want. I eat some yogurt, things like that, but I am not excessive with dairy. So you can be a good homesteader's wife and not pig out on dairy. I always wash my hands with very hot water and then rinse with very cold water. If you do this, the butter won't stick to your hands. Organic butter in the stores is crazy expensive. So here this spring, I am trying to make enough butter to last us for a year. There's only so many things that you can do with skim milk and we don't have pigs so that we can't slop the pigs. So we use it on our garden. It makes an awesome fertilizer. Real quick, before we share with you one of our favorite dairy products, I just want to let you know that this video is a part of a June is Dairy Month collaboration along with like 30 other YouTube channels that are doing videos all about dairy this month. The two channels heading it up are the Inquisitive Farm Wife and the Mennonite Farmhouse. And there will be a playlist of all the videos and a list of all the channels involved in the description below. Along with that, the Inquisitive Farm Wife will be hosting a live giveaway on her channel on July the 5th. And the way you enter into that giveaway is to drop a comment in this video. Maybe let me know what your favorite homemade dairy product is. And then head on over to the other videos in this collaboration and drop them a comment there as well. And each of those comments will count as an entry into that giveaway. There are also links in the description of this video to make it easy for you to find the tools that we use to make our dairy products. And also a link to our Etsy shop so you can find these sweet t-shirts that I've been wearing. Anybody who knows me knows that I have a major weakness for ice cream. This is what we use to make ice cream. It's amazing, it changed our life. We used to use one of those hand crank ice cream makers that you put ice and salt into. And so we just pretty much never made ice cream because it was so hard, it's such hard work. But with this one, honestly, this is the easiest dessert you're ever gonna make. Often I do like half cream, half milk. It just depends on how creamy you like it. And I add a dash of maple syrup and some vanilla. Make sure it's real vanilla, not the imitation stuff. And I usually do two eggs. This will definitely help with the creaminess of it too. And the protein. And we're not scared of raw eggs. If they are pasture raised raw eggs, I would be a little bit scared of putting raw eggs from the store in there, just FYI. This KitchenAid stick blender is one of my very favorite kitchen tools. I use it, Cody uses it every single day. I use it almost every single day. You can tell this one's got some wear and tear, discoloring, we love this thing. If you're gonna get a stick blender, get a KitchenAid, get a good brand. If you don't, they just don't work as well. They won't work as well for mayonnaise and they like shoot things out of the jar instead of like keeping it contained. Just, just trust me, we've tried others. So here is the magic of the ice cream maker. This bowl here is already frozen and ready to go. I will say never, ever, ever pour your ice cream into this bowl until the machine is turned on. If you do, this thing will not turn and your ice cream will not turn out. I promise, been there, done that. 
we're just gonna let this thing run. We're gonna eat our supper and by the time we're done, we'll have fresh ice cream. Michelle just picked these strawberries out of the garden today. Fresh strawberries going on top of our ice cream. After this was done in the ice cream freezer, we stuck it in our regular freezer to just help it firm up a little bit. And it could stand a little longer in there, but we don't wanna wait for the ice cream. Because we're more than farmers. Now we said that I keep school.